Thanks for joining me, Dr. O'Shaughnessy. Happy to be here with you. So um, can you just tell, tell me what is inflammatory breast cancer? Inflammatory breast cancer is a form of breast cancer, an aggressive form of breast cancer that looks like an infection. It's, it's an inflamed breast. And so it's, it's quite unique. It's very uncommon, quite rare, less than 5%, like one or 2% of breast cancers. And so, but it presents looking like an infection. It looks red and hot and swollen. And so that's where the name inflammatory breast cancer comes from, but it's got a unique biology. Like, how does it get to be red? You know, it's because the cancer cells have this innate ability to invade into the lymphatic channels that basically permeate the skin. So they're, they're in these lymphatic channels in the skin, and so they're blocking up the lymph flow of the skin, and so everything backs up and turns red and inflamed. But it looks like an infection. But that's why it was called inflammatory breast cancer, because initially I thought, well, is it infection related, or is, how is inflammation really tied in there? But it really is just a form of breast cancer. What are some signs and symptoms of inflammatory breast cancer? It can be um, quite subtle, Jennifer, but it can also be really quite fulminant, you know. Uh, but generally speaking, the breast starts to feel kind of full and heavy, and there's some redness there, but it can be a little sneaky because it can look kind of pinkish. Um, and it's, you really can't feel a mass, unlike breast cancer where people, oh, you feel the mass really can't feel a mass because it's more diffuse. Um, so it kind of looks like you might have had an infection, you know, um, like if you had a blocked milk duct. You know, women who are nursing, for example, will get a blocked milk duct and all of a sudden it's sore and it's red. So inflammatory breast cancer is classically, you want to see um, one third of the breast at least red or pinkish, reddish. You see the it's like an orange peel. The skin looks swollen. It's like an orange peel. And um, usually the breast is larger, but it's this redness and the orange peel that's kind of the clinical features. But then most importantly, when you do a skin biopsy, you see the inflammatory breast cancer cells. You see the breast cancer cells in plugging these lymphatics of the skin. Inflammatory breast cancer is a very distinct um, entity. It happens generally in younger women, can be older, can be postmenopausal ladies, but generally under 40. But it's this heavy red breast that's swollen. The skin looks like an orange peel. You can't feel a mass. But I think where a lot of the diagnostic problem comes in is when you can't feel a mass. Right. You can't see it on mammogram, right. you know, what I mean? because it right. doesn't act like regular breast cancer. Yeah, which was the case for me. Yes, so, yes. So therefore, you know, we're all taught right to do self-breast exams and to get our annual mammograms, but neither of those right. picked up mine. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Um, right before I was diagnosed with stage four inflammatory breast cancer, I had had a clear mammogram. So that's pretty typical, is it? Yeah. That, that it's being missed in self exams and mammograms? Yes. Um, so, self exam, you know, it looks like an infection. Right. So, if a patient um, suspects inflammatory breast cancer, so in my case, I suspected it even after um, I was told that it was probably an infection and that was just because I did what so many people do is got on the computer and started googling um, some of my own symptoms so how might a patient if they suspect they have inflammatory breast cancer which is far more serious rule this out yeah like what can they be saying to their doctors or team of medical professionals to rule it out first first off you know there just there just needs to be really a simple algorithm from the point of view of the patient, the woman, and, and her doctor, which is it's entirely reasonable and really kind of expected that if a woman presents with these odd symptoms, you know, that are unusual, and she's not nursing, you know, if she's nursing, it's likely to be a blocked duct, but not necessarily. You can still get inflammatory breast cancer, of course, when you're nursing, um, but it's okay to give a a um, week's course or a 10-day course max of an antibiotic. Um, 
But the key is the follow-up and the next step. If it doesn't get entirely better and stay entirely better, then the next step is a breast surgeon. Our ducts, even if we're not nursing, our ducts are open to the outside, and so we can get we can get an infection. So that's just a general infection is fairly common. It's not not I wouldn't say it's common, but it's way more common than um, inflammatory breast cancer. Sure. You know, it does happen. It can happen even if somebody's not nursing. You know. So you you've mentioned a couple of times younger women, um, which wasn't necessarily the the case for me. Um, what what it, what is a typical demographic? So younger women is or is there a typical demographic that that you see more inflammatory breast cancer in than any any other? Um, so it's generally women under forty, okay. but it can be women in their forties. It can be postmenopausal women as well. It's a slightly more common in African American women than in non African American women. Slightly because it tends to go along with the aggressive kinds of breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer. You know, in your case, it was estrogen receptor. You didn't, you didn't quite check the standard boxes, you know, in terms of, because um, yours was estrogen receptor positive. It can be, it can be any subtype of breast cancer, but it tends to go a little bit more along with triple negative breast cancer and African-American premenopausal women have a predilection for triple negative breast cancer unfortunately, because that's an aggressive subtype, you know. Um, so those are some, some characteristics. There's not a lot else, because it it's a, it's a, tends to be a fluky deal. It tends yes. to not be a genetic deal, you know, okay. for example. It doesn't tend to be, it can be part of, a, of, of an inherited predisposition, but it doesn't tend to be, basically. Okay. So the cause of it is really not known. Okay. Okay. Why somebody would get this is not known. We don't have as much data on this as we would like, but I've been a l fan for a long time, as you know, about optimizing our own physical health yes. in terms of controlling the breast cancer and preventing recurrence. I'm a big, big fan of avoiding weight gain, yes. ideally getting into ideal body weight and staying there consistently. We don't have as much yeah. data on that. We're waiting on data to see, for example, if somebody's overweight or obese, if they lose weight 10% or more and stay there sustained, whether that's going to improve their cure rate. Okay. But for sure, avoiding 10% body weight gain, we know that that does increase the risk of recurrence. Okay. You know, um, so diet and exercise. Diet and exercise, important. very important. And then av avoiding, you know, significant alcohol. Uh, yes. The occasional drink of alcohol is fine, but not every day. Yes. These are, these are very important lifestyle factors that I really do believe yes. can optimize a woman's long-term outcome. How could we educate more doctors on inflammatory breast cancer, those that maybe haven't seen it in their career to date? How, how might we go about educating more? You know, um, because it's something that is so rare, if there's a question about the breast, just refer, refer if there's any question. Sure. But it's really bringing, bringing people back. So I don't think you can actually um, educate about inflammatory per se. I think that's very difficult because if people never see it until you know they're 20 years into practice, there's no way they're gonna remember it, you know? Yes. And when, when docs see red breasts are inflamed in a young woman, they're gonna think infection. First. They're not gonna go and do a search okay. in the medical literature to see what the differential diagnosis is. And that's fine, actually. It's actually fine to give a, a week, 10 days of antibiotic, as long as the woman comes back yeah. in two to three weeks to see if she's completely better. Yeah, it's, that's the key. Okay. And then when in, you know, it's not 100%, then she needs to go see a specialist. Right, right. So in my case, um, we did what's called neoadjuvant uh, trimodal treatment, yes. correct? Yes, yes. How important is that within pharma? Well, can you explain that? And then yes, how important yes. is that? So when a woman has inflammatory breast cancer, what that means is the breast is basically largely involved with the cancer. It's diffuse in the lymphatics, okay? So you can't do surgery first. Because with surgery, that's only if it's kind of localized in the breast, okay? Even if you do a mastectomy, it's, it's all over the skin and it's in the lymphatics. It's, you can't get clear margins. It's, it's too diffuse. You have to dramatically decrease the amount of it before surgery. So you have to give therapy before surgery, that's called pre-operative, 
The other word for that is neoadjuvant. It just simply means before surgery. And it always involves chemotherapy. And if, if it's HER2 positive, it's chemotherapy with two antibodies that block the HER2. Okay. And if it's triple negative breast cancer, it's chemotherapy plus an immune activating medication called pembrolizumab, Keytruda. Yes. So it's, it's immune therapy plus chemotherapy. If it's triple negative, it's chemotherapy plus two anti-HER2 antibodies. If it's HER2 positive, and if it's estrogen receptor positive, it's chemotherapy. Pre-operatively, always. Okay. So yeah, you have to shrink it way, way, way down before you can go to surgery. Surgery is always a mastectomy. You can't do a lumpectomy because it, the cancer is too diffuse in the breast and you always have to do a full axillary dissection. You can't do sentinel lymph node biopsy. You have to, take, you have to do a full axillary dissection because the cancer loves the lymphatics. And then you have to always do comprehensive radiation therapy, the chest wall and all the lymph nodes around the area. Yes. Yes. And so that's, it's, very, it's sort of the most aggressive form of everything we have, Jennifer, for inflammatory breast cancer. What's the future um, hold for inflammatory breast cancer in terms of treatment, trials, um, what sort of hope is out there for those of us diagnosed? Um, so, inflammatory breast cancer, um, unfortunately because it's so rare, it's hard to do clinical trials um, just in inflammatory breast cancer, although thankfully there are some centers in the U.S., Dana-Farber, MD Anderson, for example, where there are specialized inflammatory breast cancer clinics, and there are faculty experts who spend their whole life thinking about what's the best clinical trial. So first of all, women should know about that, and they should consider either an in-person or if possible a telemed consultation to see what trials are available to them. You know? So that's, that's the first thing to say is that they're, it's rare, so there's not a lot of trials specifically focused on inflammatory breast cancer, but there are, there are some and there are some experts who do nothing but think about that. But in general, we think of inflammatory breast cancer as some of our, um, in, in those we haven't cured yet, because we still thankfully cure probably, you know, 70% of women who present with it, but still that's a third of women that we're not curing, you know? what's on the horizon in, in general, in general, in general yes. for these aggressive breast cancers that have not been cured by our standard therapies, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I think the, um, we're gonna see more use of immune therapy. We're hoping to get good results this year for the aggressive form of hormone receptor positive breast cancer like, like you had with immune therapy big study we're waiting on the results so that would be awesome but also improving upon immune therapy for the triple negative where it's already shown improvement in outcome it's still not hundred percent by any means yes. um, but it's it's been a, a leap forward now there's going to be building upon that you know for example we're waiting on um, FDA approval for hormone receptor positive breast cancer of an important agent called capivacertib it's an oral blocker of the AKT pathway. That's an important resistance pathway okay. in breast cancer in general and inflammatory breast cancer. So that's an, a very important agent that we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to the FDA approval of better anti-estrogen medicines. We're hoping for FDA approval in February of an of a oral medication called l which is a better form of an anti-estrogen therapy. It's, it's like fulvestrin, Fazodex, which is an intramuscular injection in the gluteal muscle, but it's an oral therapy and it's, it's more effective than, the, than the, um, the Fazodex, you know, for example. So in some ways it's better therapies against the estrogen receptor, but it's new therapies against the AKT pathway, you know, for example, bringing immune therapy into the aggressive estrogen receptor positive uh, breast cancers. That's very important. Um, and um, there's a whole field of understanding how exactly the cancer falls down on repairing DNA. All cancers can't repair their DNA correctly, so if you can find out exactly what it can't do, there's a resulting 
dependency on a different DNA repair pathway, knock that out. Yes. That's a big area of research. It's working now for women who have inherited a BRCA mutation, a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. We have PARP inhibitors for them because the breast cancer, when it loses BRCA1 or 2, it needs PARP big time. And when you knock it out, it's very, very effective. That's made a big impact in the cure of women who have um, inherited a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, Okay. the cure rate. That's so good. that's an example of how going after that DNA repair vulnerability can make a big impact. So that's mm -hmm. another big important area of research. Yeah, absolutely. Gives us a lot of hope. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, a lot has changed even since oh I was diagnosed yes. six years ago. Yes, so. it has. Yes.